Hi, it's the Lipstick Gal. Thank you so much for watching today. Somebody asked for a video about the upcoming Sephora sale. That's what we're doing. So the sale starts on Friday the 14th for those who are VIB Rouge. And if you're curious, it's those of us who have spent $1,000 or more in the last calendar year. Somehow I keep telling myself I'm not going to do that and I still end up there that's okay. VIB Rouge, get four days to shop before anybody else is able to access the sale on April 18. Everybody else does. If you're a member, you get to start then and you get 15% off. And if you are an insider, um, you'll be able to get 10% off. The one thing that's great is that if you like any of the Sephora collection products, they are all 30% off throughout the entirety of the sale. When you're thinking about what to get. Sometimes it's like oh, everything's on sale and you just go a little hog wild. Been there, done that. Don't recommend. Um, I don't want to give you a list of things that I love and would work for me to say you need to get. I think what you need to do is look through your collection. Am I needing a new everyday mascara, brow product, lip liner, something that you use regularly and is a staple. Are you running short and will it run out before the next opportunity to get it on sale? I feel like when you're talking about high-end and luxury products, get them on sale whenever you can. The other thing to keep in mind, there are a lot of brands that know, hey, Sephora is putting on this sale, everybody loves to shop during the savings event, and they themselves will put their merchandise on sale, it will offer free shipping, sometimes the percentage off will be higher. So those who are VIB Rouge will get 20% off, but if you're not already at that Rouge level, you might be able to get it on the brand's website for 20% off, and that would still save you more than getting it through Sephora. All right, so beyond that, think about what are, are you almost out of foundation? Are you almost out of powder? What are the things that you use regularly? Once you have that squared away, then ask yourself the question, what's been getting my attention? What's been calling my name and saying, buy me, buy me, buy me? And that's what I wanted to share with you today. These are the products that for one reason or another, I haven't purchased yet, but definitely have my attention. Maybe we should just start with the most obvious and talk about lip products. <laughs> there have been a lot of lip products that are newer that have my attention, plus some that I just keep thinking, do I want it? I don't know. Um, but the first one I wanna tell you about is the Kaja Jelly Charm Glaze Lip Stain and Blush. Now, I would never use it as blush. I would probably only use it as a lip stain. The reason that I haven't purchased it at this point is because it had the word stain in it. I was like, I don't know. My, me and lip stains, we don't get along. I have 48 year old lips. They're perpetually dry and any stain kind of settles into those lines in my lips, those vertical lines, accentuates those. Um, and it just makes my lips look less attractive and more textured and they don't look as smooth as I would like. But I heard something interesting that this Kaja um, lip stain is very similar in formula to the new one from Rare. And I picked up one of these um, and I've really been liking it. And somebody, I was watching a review of this and they said, this is very much like the other one. They're calling this a lip oil. And I was like, yeah, but it doesn't really feel like a lip oil. It's more of a lip stain. And I love the formula of this. And if somebody said it's similar to the one from Kaja, I like the deeper tones that Kaja has. So there's a good chance that I would pick up shade number four, which is called Fig Soda. I have like this enough that I've been curious to try another one, the deepest shade called Affection. That really deep, dark shade looks fantastic. And for me, it'd be more like what it looks like after it turns into a stain. This is one where when I put it on, it looks very pink, but after four or five applications, like by about three in the afternoons, I keep putting on another layer. I have a really great stain on my lips. My lips are hydrated, but I find that this product doesn't stay glossy on my lips that long. So I'm perpetually reapplying so my lips don't dry out but it builds a beautiful stain. So I thought, ooh, what would it be like if I got the deepest berry shade? That's on my list. Another new product is the Merit Shade Slick Gelee Sheer Tinted Lip Oil. Now I have one of the Merit lip oils. Um, this is the shade, I think this is Cara Cara. Love this formula, but these new ones are slightly different formula. They're a little bit plusher, a little bit shinier. Um, and I would get go for the red, the one in Maraschino. That one looks really exciting to me. Um, I need to pull this one out more now that the weather's warming up. This is the sort of product I like to wear where it's lightweight, it's not heavy, it's not matte. But that one in Maraschino is also buy me, buy me, buy me. I've heard nothing but good about the Lawless Forget the Filler um, Lip Plumper line. 
Okay, so this is a plumping gloss. And of course I would go for the cherry vanilla <laughs> red. I, I love a red lip product. Um, this one's $26. The one from Merit is $24. They're kind of spency. So I probably would choose between the one from Merit or the one from Lawless, but I've heard really good things about both of these lip products. And they're the sort of products that I really heavily lean on in the warmer months. Another slightly new product that I've kind of had my eye on is one from Tower 28. This is their Juice Balm Vegan Tinted Lip Balm. This is like a chubby pencil in a roll-up applicator. Um, it really reminds me of the chubby sticks from Clinique from years ago that I used to love and be addicted to. They have four shades. I'd probably go for the bright reddish orange one called Squeeze. It's $16. The one thing I need to keep in mind is the Tower 28 products because they are one of those Clean at Sephora brands. There's no preservatives in there. The products don't last that long. I used to have one of their glosses and I love the formula of the gloss. I love how it's not sticky, how it's not heavy, how it doesn't like sit in my lip lines or settle into the corners and string and pull and get sticky and gross. Love it, but she lasted six months. And with a lip collection as large as mine, I need something with a little bit of preservative or six months from now when I open it up and go, oh, smells bad, I'm gonna pitch it. So I need to think if I'm gonna get this, I need to aggressively use it spring and summer so by the time you know fall comes around, I'm not gonna feel like I didn't get my money's worth. So that one's kind of on the might buy. But if you're the sort of person who has a really small lip collection is looking for one kind of fun, sheer, lightweight, but conditioning shade to wear in the warmer months, one of these might be perfect for you. The last couple of lip products on here are not new products, they're products that have been around for a while and they've been in my loves list for a while and I just haven't said yes. One is from Gucci, it's our long lasting satin lipstick. I would get the shade 201 called Painted Veil. This is a lipstick that I, I've been trying a few more things from Gucci. Um, I'm wearing this today, this is their Voile Sheer lipstick and this is the shade Love Is Better. I, I like it, I don't love it. And, and I'm curious because it's $45. I don't know that I would get another one of these Voile lipsticks. It's not bad. I just don't know that for this price, $45, that it's doing anything more than a luxuriously lucent from Lisa Eldridge at $36 would do. $36 or $45, that's almost a $10 difference. Um, and then when you start adding in, I mean, packaging, 10 out of 10. Gucci always knocks that out of the park with packaging, but I'm not purchasing a product for the packaging. I'm purchasing a product for the product. Um, and is it a bad lipstick? No, but is it worth $45? Mm, it's okay, but it's not like amazeballs. So I'm curious, I've had a lot of people recommend the satin lipsticks to me, and the Painted Veil looks kind of like a rosewood nude shade that I would get a lot of use out of. So I don't know that I'm ready to go straight for the Gucci matte lipstick, but this one in the satin formula does have my attention, but it's been in my loves list for more than two years. All right, something else that's been sitting in my love list for a while is the Rare Beauty Stay Vulnerable Lip Gloss. Now this is $20, I love the affordability of this, but I have so many lip glosses and I don't know that I need to pay $20 for another one, but I have been liking products from Rare, quite a few of them. Um, I like their lip souffles, I like their glowing lip, dewy lip balms, those are really good. I think it's the With Gratitude Dewy Lip Balm. I like their soft-spoken um, matte lipsticks, except for the colors aren't for me. But I feel like these glosses have shades that are more my speed, and I probably would really like it. But I'm more likely, I think, to pick up another one of these than I am to go for the gloss. All right, that's all the lip products. Let's talk about the only eyeshadow palette I have here. And it's not new and nothing excites me right now. But I've literally gone through the eyeshadow section of Sephora probably four or five times, you know, over the last week. I sit down, I look at things. Sometimes I'm in a mood where I'm not inspired. Sometimes I'm like, everything looks good. And I wanted to go through and really think about, okay, what is exciting to me right now? And there's not a lot. Maybe things, maybe something's gonna get released before the sale. Inevitably it'll happen after the sale's over, so you have to pay full price for it. But the only thing I still have in here has been in here for the last year and a half, almost two years, and it's the Natasha Denona Glam Eyeshadow Palette. It's that cool eyeshadow palette. The thing is, 
I like Natasha Denona's eyeshadow formula. I like the midi size eyeshadow palette. So I think that size is perfect. I like it better than paying the 120 what dollars for the really big ones. I feel like it's really great, except it's been in here for so long and I still haven't purchased. I've swatched it in store. I know it's lovely. Everyone recommends it. And I think that out of all the midi size palettes, this would be the one that I would get the most use out of. This is the one that would be kind of daily, would do something like what I'm doing right now, which is cool neutrals. And I'm really loving that. But the other part of me is like, how long before you're craving something else? <laughs> um, and at a $70 price point, like $69, I know I get it on sale, but still, I'm not sure not sure that this is what I need. And the fact that it's been here and I still haven't purchased it, I think is kind of telling me what I need about this, is that I can get looks that are similar to this from other places. I don't necessarily need this palette, but it's what's in my loves list still. I haven't been able to like get rid of it, but it's not one that I'm instantly, that's what I need. I also think it's funny, I've gone through all of Sephora's online website and there's so little that is really like jumping out at me. There's something different for me going into a brick and mortar Sephora the minute I walk through the doors, I smell the makeup or the fragrance or whatever and I see it and I can put my fingers in it. Sometimes just because I'm there and I see everything, I feel like a kid in a candy shop and I instantly start like dumping stuff in my basket. The good thing for me about shopping online is I can look at it, I can read reviews, I can see the swatches. I have the opportunity to open up another website to read a review or to look at somebody else's photo swatches or read their experience with it. And I feel like it kind of helps de-escalate that instant buy, buy, buy impulse, which is why I still haven't got that Natasha Denona eyeshadow palette. But I went through the whole Sephora website, like the makeup portion of it, and there's very little there that is making me like super excited. There's a lot of new lip products, you know, lipsticks and lip glosses and whatever for the lips are my Achilles heel. But other than that, a lot of stuff here has kind of like been sitting in my loves list for a while. Something else that's been in there since 2021, it's been like two years sitting in my loves list, is the Dior Backstage Glow Face Palette. This is the original one, the one that has kind of like the soft white shimmer, the pink, the bronze, um, kind of like that rich gold shade. It's beautiful, but I kind of feel like I've got plenty of highlight right now. I don't necessarily need it, but I haven't been able to kick it out of my loves list. It is one of those products that is beautiful and is exciting still when I see it, but I don't know that it would deliver that. Um, I just recently decluttered one of my Dior highlights, um, and this is only $45. I like that you're getting four shades, but I wouldn't use all four. I might use two, maybe three, but I'm still kind of feeling like, mm, don't know. Another product that's been in there for a while that I haven't pulled the trigger on, but I might this time because I had a really good experience with another product from the line is the Gucci Soleil Luminous Bronzer. I ended up picking up this Gucci blush. This is a luminous matte blush um, during the last Sephora sale. And I'll tell you, I have used it so much. I love it. Like it's really rare that I get to the point where like the imprint is gone. I have so many things in my collection. This color has been great. This formula has been great. And I was going, I wonder if the Gucci powder and the Gucci bronzer are the same formula as this. And they probably wouldn't be because this is a color product, but I love the way it looks on my skin. So I instantly went back to going, mm, let me read reviews of the Soleil Luminous Bronzer. I am not sure which shade I pick up. Shade one ends up looking a little bronzy pink. It has a little bit of, maybe it looks like you might be sunburnt a little bit. Shade two might be too dark for me, but I, I don't know. I don't know, it's $64. I don't know that I paid $60 for a bronzer, but um, it looks really interesting to me. Another bronzer that I have in here, I'm probably not going to pick up, although it's way more affordable. This is the Tower 28 Sculptino Soft Matte Cream uh, Contour. I know they have their bronzino, like their luminous bronzer. I never pulled the trigger on that. I used to have one of their cream lip and cheek products, which I like, but I didn't love. Um, I feel like I got the wrong shade. I couldn't, I should have gone in store and swatched, and I didn't. This is one of those products that was recently released this spring, like late winter, early spring. I don't know if it was late February, early March, but it's a matte version of this cream bronzer. It's 20 bucks. Um, I don't know. I don't know, because remember, 
products from Tower 28 don't have preservatives, they don't last forever, and I have a ton of cream products. I want something that's gonna have a little bit more longevity, but that's definitely in there. Another cream product that I have been eyeballing is the Vanessa Myrick Sammy Skin Blurring Blush. I have one, <gasps> so pretty. This one's really vibrant. This is the shade Golden Hour, and I was thinking about the shade Rose and Brunch, because this is one that although I love and it looks fantastic on my lips and my cheeks, Rose and brunch would be a little bit easier and I wouldn't have to be so careful when I'm applying it because it's not as vibrant as this. This is like orange, but I love, 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 love. This other one is a little bit more like a, you know, muted rose petal color and it looks really, really beautiful. I like the formula, love how easy it is. Might need to grab this one. Another blush that I've been looking at, so many people were telling me how great the Laura Mercier blushes were. This is their blush color infusion, and I was looking at the shade Chai. There's a couple of shades that might work for me. Chai tends to be a little rosier, but has a brown undertone to it. Um, there's one that was a little bit more rosy peach leaning, and I'm, I'm, I'm not really loving kind of peach blush right now. I've already had that peach moment, and I don't know, this kind of more nudie tan shade really is calling to me, but I'm I'm not sure. Not sure, not sure, but so many people, especially people who have a fair complexion, were recommending not just this formula, but chai specifically. When it comes to complexion, there's a couple of things I've been eyeballing. Two are from Bobbi Brown. One is their skin corrector stick, and the other is the under eye corrector. Now, you know I have a huge love affair with the Super Luminous Under Eye Genius from Beauty Pie. I have gone through one of these pots already. I just realized when I was putting my makeup on this morning, I just found the bottom of this one. I just found the bottom. That means that I'm gonna need another one of these soon. And I was like, do I wanna try something different? And I've heard so many people talk for years about how great these Bobbi Brown correctors are. The one that's in stick form, um, they say you can use under your eyes, but they're talking about it really more for around the face for discoloration. Um, the one that comes kind of like in the little black compact is one that they are talking about. It's specifically named under eye. And I think that there is probably a level of emollient difference. Like the one in the stick is gonna be a little bit firmer. The one in the pot is gonna be a little bit creamier. I don't know, I wouldn't get both. I'd probably get one over the other but I have the lightest shade in both of those, which is um, Porcelain Bisque. That's kind of what I have in my loves list right now. I don't know that I'm gonna do it. I'm, I might just order another one of these, but I'm always thinking, try something new. But if I don't like it, I guess I can always go back to the other. Other concealers I've got my eye on, the Dior Forever Skin Correct Full Coverage Concealer, man, I am slowly trying more and more Dior products, more Dior, more Gucci, and this is definitely one that makes me kind of go, ooh, I don't know. Just looking at it, I would need the lightest shade, but um, full coverage, but it's also supposed to be, you know, hydrating, a little bit radiant. That's always what I'm looking for in a concealer. And I, I feel like I found some really great concealers in the last couple of years, but my under eyes are forever changing. <laughs> I cannot wear the same concealers I used to be able to wear in my mid thirties. Those days are over, or even in my late twenties. I am looking for something very different now. Something that's not gonna settle into creases or accentuate texture because texture I do have, I have fine lines. It can't be too drying. Shape Tape and me, the original Shape Tape and me don't get along anymore because it just makes me look a decade or two older than I am right here and I don't like that. Another one that I had a friend recommend to me was the Hourglass Vanish Airbrush Concealer. Also would need the lightest shade in that, but I might get the mini because the mini is only $18. And with as many concealers as I have, I'm never gonna finish one all the way before it goes bad. So I was thinking, ooh, look, they have the lightest shade in the mini, might pick that up. Something else that is brand new, and I've never tried the foundation stick, but Tom Ford has their Traceless Soft Matte Concealer. People, I don't know, I've been reading reviews, some people love, some people don't love. And this is one of those where, I mean, it's, it's a commitment, it's a $60, $60 concealer. Um, but I love having like a really good concealer and that's all I use for the day. Just like in a couple of areas, blend it out, powder lightly and move on with my day. I don't know, this, this might be it. And also the fact that it's kind of new also kind of has me going, hmm. And if I could get it for like $12 off what it is now, if I get it for $48, I don't, I don't know, I might. 
um, but I would also take the lightest shade in that. So a couple of powders that caught my eye and I need more powder, like another hole in my head, but the NARS Soft Matte Advanced Perfect Powder. Um, this is one that was released, when was this released? I think it was like around the holidays. And my shade, which is the lightest shade in Cliff, has been perpetually out of stock, out of stock, out of stock, out of stock. I don't know, because I normally don't like truly mattifying powders, but I have a couple that I've been reaching for that I, they, they've been looking really good. And I'm like, I don't know. So this is one I've heard good reviews about. It has a four star rating on Sephora. That one's interesting. The other powder I have my eye on is the one from Makeup Forever. It's kind of new. It's her HD Skin Twist and Light 24 Hour Luminous Finishing Powder. This is one that has that really interesting packaging where you like twist it and all the powder like falls down into the center of this well. It's all in the package, like around the edge. It looks like a donut. And I know, was it Uma Beauty who had this packaging originally last summer or fall for their powders? And I remember seeing that um, Makeup Forever was doing the same sort of packaging with like a three colored powder. And I've really been liking this four colored Prisma Libre from Givenchy. Um, I don't really love the packaging though. And the idea of having it in like this little donut where you can twist just a little bit and enough of all three colors fall down. You could swirl them together and apply them. That sounds really good. It's also way less expensive. It's $45. Um, and I think this is what, 59? <laughs> It's a little bit more expensive, but the finish of this is gorgeous. I'm really curious. I don't know that I need any more powder right now. I, I truly don't. But this one really kind of has me going, hmm. I thought that, has this been out for a while? Because I kept checking Sephora's website and I wouldn't find it, wouldn't find it. Because I remember seeing it on Trend Mood a long time ago. And maybe it was, we're putting this out and then it got kind of benched for a while. I don't know. But now that it's available, it definitely has had me intrigued for a while. The last thing, um, it's finally back in stock. It comes in and out of stock every now and again, is the Kosas Brow Team Eyebrow Pencil and Gel Trio Set. So this has their brow pencil, their tinted fiber brow, product as well as their clear brow gel and they're all three full sizes normally that would be $72 if you were to buy them individually but in this set they're $42 and then with my 20% off I feel like now I have so many backup brow products I was just looking this morning these are unopened brow products but these are these are my favorites I have some drugstore favorites some M favorites some favorites from Glossier like I don't really need any more brow products, but I always love trying things. And I've heard so many good things about the Kosas brow products, especially their tinted fiber gel. And I was like, I, I don't know, maybe, maybe. I just have not pulled the trigger. But I feel like if there's any time to do it, when you can get it as a set where there's a discount, and then on top of that, having the 20% off, I feel like that might be like the thing that pushes me over the edge and go like, let's try those products. That's all that's in my loves list. Now, I probably will reevaluate things, maybe take some things out, add some other things. And I'm thinking if I'm adding anything, I might add some K18, which is that repairing hair mask. Um, I might add in a fragrance I've been enjoying, but mm, I don't, I kind of don't see myself doing anything more than adding in like, reparative hair stuff. I tend to get my skincare other places. I might pick up another one of the Paula's Choice um, SPF 50. I really like that. And I'm forgetting what the name of it is, but it's the Youth Resist line. I really like that one in the light blue tube. I just, I've been trying something else. Um, but I, I kind of feel like what would be the thing that I would absolutely want to have? And I'm thinking about it. There's a lot of expensive skincare, but I'm liking more affordable stuff that I feel is just as effective for me. I tend to not spend a ton of money on hair products. If anything, it's makeup and fragrance. And right now I'm kind of not in a fragrance mood. I don't know. I just feel like I was going through the app. I was scrolling, 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 and I've done it for like multiple days now in a row. I'm just not as excited as I usually am come to Sephora sale. I, d I don't know. <laughs> it must be something up with me where I'm just like, Nyeh. but I don't have that same excitement that I usually have, like kid in a candy store. What am I getting? What am I getting? I would love to know what products are catching your attention. What products are at the top of your loves list? What things, and maybe they're not brand new, but maybe they're things that, you know, I need another mascara and since they're on sale, I'm gonna pick up two or um, I'm almost out of my foundation, let me know what you're planning to get during the sale. And if you're not planning to shop, fantastic. 
Um, use what you have, don't feel compelled, and don't forget that other brands may have a better percentage off on their own websites. Just something to keep in mind as you go about the Sephora frenzy. Thank you so, so much for watching. Have an incredible day, and I will see you again soon.